hockey and boxing, then be sure you get the sporting news. Grab this great subscription deal. Find out for yourself why over 725,000 sports fans get the Sporting News Weekly and get smart for themselves. Call 1-800-854-4900 and get 29 issues of the Sporting News for four payments of just $4.99. You'll save 69% off the cover price, 40% off the regular subscription rate. Call now, 1-800-854-4900. Now on video, Grand Slam. Relive all the excitement of baseball in a bases-loaded celebration of America's dream game. Probably the best thing that's ever happened in a baseball videotape. I would have played for nothing, you know I mean? I just love to play baseball. I mean, it beats working, believe me. Hitting a baseball is the hardest single thing to do in sports. Believe it or not, I guessed about 95% of the time. A genuine superstar of a tape, a gem of a collectible, flat-out marvelous, a baseball lover's dream. Pitchers are the enemy. They were always the enemy. I try not to get along with any of them. I just would stay away from them. I didn't fraternize with them. They're not really people. They're the dumbest athletes on the field. To order your collector's copy of Grand Slam, call toll-free 1-800-841-5500. It's your turn at bat for a Grand Slam. Get in on the excitement and call now. That's 1-800-841-5500. back at Alumni Field at Worcester Polytech in Worcester, Massachusetts at halftime of the MIAA Division III State Final. The Bromfield Trojans in pursuit of their fourth consecutive state championship with a 2-0 lead over the Cohasset Skippers. Before we take a look at some of the statistics of the first half, let's go to the roof directly above my head where Gary Swanson is standing by with T.J. Williams. T.J. Williams, as coach of the Newton North women's team, uh, playing tomorrow in the state finals, how do you prepare a team, a high school team in general, for a state final match? Well, at, at the age, the high school age, they're very emotional, so uh, my tendency is to try to wind them down a little bit. You, you wind them up and then try to wind them down. And uh, they have a tendency to get the, not channel the emotion in the direction you want it, which is towards playing smart tactical soccer. Uh, coming into a game like this, uh, at this site right here, it, it changes my mind a little bit just watching today. Okay, Cohasset is down 2-0 at the half. What do you think their head coach is trying to do to his troops to get him ready for the second half? I hope he's giving them some sort of an indication that this is high school sport and anything can happen in high school sport. And that uh, now that he's got the greatest advantage he's going to have all day, this wind, uh, he shouldn't panic with it and he should be a little bit more uh, realistic in their attack and not too optimistic. The long ball really isn't going to be the answer with this win. That's just going to carry it to the keeper. I think he's going to have to try and build out of it and use the size of this field, which is excellent, and uh, and uh, use the space that's available. Okay, thanks, TJ. And back to you in the booth, Scott. Okay, and at halftime, it is two to nothing. Bromfield over Cohasset. We'll be back to take a look at the first half and start the second half right after this timeout. The most memorable moments in NFL history can now be yours in an all-new video cassette collection. Presenting the official NFL Films video collection from NFL Films, Fox Hills, and Time Life. Now you can replay the greatest games, the mammoth feats of the legendary linemen, the suspense of the Super Bowls, and more. Kick off your collection with the toughest, most explosive players in the game. They're all part of your first video cassette, Crunch Course. Just $14.99 plus shipping and handling. The official NFL Films video collection. Here's how to order. NFL fans call now 1-800-826-1100 to get your first video cassette crunch course at the low introductory price of just $14.99 or send $18.22 to NFL Video Collection, Department 41, Box 1322, Buffalo, New York. 
The Great Games, The Games to Remember, 1957. Notre Dame's Fighting Irish snap Oklahoma's 47-game winning streak, and the sporting news was there. 1987, Penn State caps a perfect season with a Fiesta Bowl win over Miami to take the national championship, and the sporting news was there. Yes, wherever great games are played, the Sporting News is there for you, bringing you America's most complete coverage of football, baseball, basketball, and hockey. The Sporting News, where great things happen every week. Don't let them happen without you. Call now. Subscribe now at the lowest rate anywhere with convenient delivery right to your door. Call 1-800-854-4900 and get 29 issues of the Sporting News for four payments of just $4.99. You'll save 69% off the cover price, 40% off the regular subscription rate. You can't get a better deal. Call now 1-800-854-4900. That's 1-800-854-4900. Dangerous play is the shot on goal there. Swift with the save. Another shot is loose. They shot and they score. They hit it towards the circle, it rolls loose, pad, kick stop, made and a score! Beautiful follow up there on the part of the Welcome back to Worcester Polytech in Worcester, Massachusetts at halftime of the Division Three State Final. It's Bromfield 2, Cohasset nothing. And uh, Gary, let's take a look at both of the Bromfield goals right now. The first one was an individual effort here. You can see off a of throw in Dukovic with a great turn here. Just hits the ball on the outside of his foot to the far post. And goalkeeper ready is going to try and get there in time. The wind sort of carries it, banks off the post. Beautiful shot there by Dukovic for the first goal of the match. And the second goal is a nice teamwork here. You're going to see the one-touch pass by Kalen looking for Melus in the corner. Melus is going to take the ball to the corner and get the ball behind the defense and drive it into the middle here. You're going to see a wide open Caprio in the middle right here. Just takes the ball to the inside of his foot, tucks it right into the side netting. Beautiful goal again for Bromfield. And Caprio was the dangerous man in the entire first half for Bromfield. You look at the score again, two to nothing. The shots certainly do uh, profess the territorial advantage. Eight to two, Bromfield. Goalie saves five to nothing, Cohasset. Corner kicks five zero, Bromfield. And fouls in the first half, Bromfield with nine, Cohasset with two. But that big uh, statistic, of course, is the one on top with 40 minutes left to play as Bromfield looks for its fourth consecutive state championship as you look at Tom Hill the coach at uh, Bromfield we were talking to him before the game Gary and uh, uh, so what uh, we have a record of uh, 197 and 31 I believe we asked him about that he said well gee I don't keep those kind of stats and how many years have you been here? Oh, 12 or 13, I don't keep track of that. I'll tell you what if I had a record like Coach Hills I definitely keep track. <laughs> well he's got the record and he's got the state championships to show for it and right now he has a two to nothing lead as Ryan, as we get ready for the start of the second half, the teams, of course, changing sides. The white jerseys are Bromfield's Trojans. The blue jerseys, the skippers of Cohasset High. Bromfield will be attacking into the wind this time. Cliff Kalen, number 11 on your screen, and number 7, John Seifel, standing by to handle the opening kickoff. And we are just about set for action. This is Division Three. TJ. Division three, again, we were talking about uh, breaking it up into thirds, and the uh, lower third, depending on boy enrollment, is what is Division three. How many schools is that uh, dependent on? Uh, in the MIAA, in the uh, state association, there's uh, approximately 300-plus schools, and 291 of those schools are playing soccer. And uh, Cohasset looking for a very quick or I mean Bromfield looking for a very quick attack but there was a uh, shot over the goal bad angle shot there by Dukovic had one or two players uh, in the middle of the field opted for the shot and just hit it high and all those schools TJ do you have a number of how many boys actually are enrolled in soccer programs uh, I don't have that exact number but it's definitely a sport that is uh, taking over at the high school level and not only men but women This is Coley, Travis Coley, trying to set it up for Cohasset. They were very unsuccessful with their attack in the first half. Cohasset getting to this game off a 2-1 to one win over Medway in the South Sectional uh, Championship. 
Actually, that was the semifinal. They had to play Marblehead in the final, the Eastern Mass final. They gained their way here. The one nothing went over Marblehead. So the, the, semi, the South sectional final is uh, sometimes referred to as a semifinal game in the format within this association because they play a South sectional final, then they'll play an Eastern Mass right. and stuff like that. So it, it, it can get confusing <laughs> with the actual terminology. Some of the teams that uh, Cohasset had to step over to get here, Medfield, Fairhaven, Dover, Sherborne. And we have a new keeper in, in goal for Bromfield. We were told before the game by Tom Hill that David Keller, he put a question mark next to his name that he might see some action today. And uh, David Keller is in goal for Bromfield now. We make it a shot of me. Uh, tall, strapping fellow. Gives good height in the uh, protection of the goal. And that could be the reason for the substitution. They're going to get a lot more balls in the air. The crosses with the wind. And he could probably use his height in here in the second half to get those high crosses. And there you look at him, David Keller, the new keeper for Bromfield, trying to protect a two to nothing lead, and right away, Cohasset was looking for an attack, and uh, that's uh, certainly a lot more quickly than Cohasset attacked against the wind. Nuri called for the offside, and this will come back the other way for Bromfield. And again, Bromfield uh, Stephen Rimshaw on the kick. Or excuse me, let's check that. That was Minton in on the kick. Michael Smith keeps it in bounds. Header toward goal, cleared away. Oh, almost an opportunity. Chris Brown was unable to settle the ball and we will get a goal kick for Bromfield. And a substitution now for Cohasset. Leaving the game, Sean Gallagher and coming in number 19, Brian Schultz. And that's off the head of Schultz, so this will be a throw in for Bromfield. Smith handles it. And this will be another throw in for Bromfield. Bromfield in the white. Cohasset in the blue. Seipel trying to get it into Caprio. Marsak charging. Marsak unable to catch up with Adrian Dukovic, who manages to clear it back to keeper David Keller. And right away, Keller now can understand the problems that Joel Reddy had with punting the ball into the wind in the first half. Free kick for Bromfield. The Trojans have won seven straight Central Mass titles and another score for Bromfield in a rule offside, no goal. No goal. It will be a goal kick instead for Cohasset. Offside the call. I believe the offside player was Michael Smith. Did you pick that one up, TJ? Because I certainly did not. No, I didn't. I didn't pick it up. There were a lot of bodies in there. Marsak. And the ball goes over. It looked as if the last touch was by Marsak. We'll see. No, they are calling a deflection, and it will be a throw in for Cohasset. We appear to have an injured Bromfield player, but he's staying in, Adrian Dukovic. Noticeably favoring his right ankle, however, as he is in the area. Seipel. Seipel with a long feed downfield, cleared away. That was Gagliano on the clear. And we have a foul called on the play. 
on Glenn Malis. This will be a free kick for Cohasset. And Travis Coley asking for a little assistance as the wind has its way with the ball. And no handball call. Play on. This will be a throw in for Bromfield. Here we're going to look at the goal scored by Bromfield that was not allowed due to offsides. It looks as though the ball was played through. Headed back into the middle by the Superback Bear, then headed back on. It does look as though Caprio was offside, but it's hard to tell from that angle. We don't know uh, where Caprio was when the ball was played. This is Caprio with the ball now for Bromfield. Caprio with running room. Travis Coley takes it away. But Bromfield retains possession right back to Caprio. Nice ball for Dutkovich, but right there is ready. And ready right away, finding the punting with the wind at his back much more to his liking. The foot race is won by Mintonen, and this will be a goal kick for Bromfield, as apparently the ball was deflected off of Jason Cameron. Here we're going to see Cameron and racing after the ball. It's going to be a deflection off the two players, Mintonen and Cameron. It looks as though it might have been a, a corner kick there. Tough to tell. Well, the ruling is that it deflected off of Cameron, so we'll get a goal kick for. Bromfield and that is a change Cameron was playing right midfield in the first half now he's playing uh, up front we did note that uh, Dan Magnus said before the game if they weren't having a lot of success they were going to push him up front and we get a free kick for Cohasset. Now, TJ, I'm kind of curious, on a percentage basis, do you have any idea how soccer is catching up with uh, football and popularity among the high school boys? I think they're both extremely popular. Football's been around a lot longer at the high school level, but uh, soccer has just gotten such grassroots and youth soccer that coming through with the men and the women, it's just the participation numbers are incredible. I know a lot of areas are having difficulty fielding football teams now at the, young, the young, younger levels. A lot of the Pop Warner teams and that have been uh, taken over by uh, soccer organizations. And oh, and an offside called as Jason Cameron was bearing in on David Keller. And we'll get a free kick now for Bromfield. Of course, the philosophy of uh, sports and uh, on the high school level, TJ, wouldn't be so much uh, a philosophy of winning as, say, on the college level or especially on the pro level. It's difficult sometimes to convince the kids of that and sometimes the parents of that, but you're absolutely right. It, it should be kept in perspective, and in most cases it is. A, a participation-based policy is something that is uh, strived for in most of the association schools. This copyrighted program is brought to you under pay cable TV rights granted by MIAA solely for the entertainment of our viewing audience. Any publication, rebroadcast, retransmission, or other use of the accounts and descriptions of this game without the written consent of the New England Sports Network and MIAA is prohibited. And of course, the MIAA, the Massachusetts Inter Interscholastic Athletic Association. Ohasset looking for an attack. This is Nori. And Nori's shot is right on Keller. Nori's shooting that from about 25 yards out. That's what you and I were talking about at halftime in terms of the optimism. It's an optimistic ball, but it needs to be a little bit more planned out like that ball. Well, Marsak was the target man pretty much for the entire first half uh, when they were able to work some kind of an attack, and he was the target there with Jason Cameron, as Gary mentioned, moved up to try to play him. Go, 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 
Number eight, Mark Dutkovich. He scored the first goal of this game. Eleven and a half minutes in. Since Bromfield has added another one and it is two to nothing. And this will be a throw in for Bromfield. And a throw in the other way for Cohasset now. Off the head of Marsak, nobody home looking for Cameron now, and it's cleared away from him. Seipel. And his connection with Dukovic was too long, so it'll be a throw in for Cohasset. Caprio, James Caprio coming away with it. The ever dangerous James Caprio. Seipel now taken away from him, and here comes Cohasset. Clear by Michael Smith. Bill Baird clears it downfield. Cameron. And Cameron just lays a long ball in front. Nobody there. They've got the right idea coming out of the back and getting into midfield, but then they seem to lose their composure a little bit going into the attacking third. Seem to be a little bit too impatient to yeah, not letting exactly. the play develop. We're going to say a play where Cameron, a little collision there. Cameron was whistled for a foul there. Looked like a 50 50 ball. And this will be a free kick now for Bromfield. The Cohasset Skippers, they've won their last 14 games, but they're down two to nothing here with 27 minutes left in regulation of this Division Three championship game. The other side. Dan Maggers wearing a Vermont sweatshirt. No, he didn't go to Vermont. He went to Eastern Nazarene College, graduated in 85, but he's been wearing that shirt for some time now. It's his lucky charm. Uh, his keeper has the same amount of shutouts as uh, the goalkeeper for Vermont, Jim St. Andre. Michael Smith putting it back in front. I hope this isn't setting precedent for, for the Vermont Yale game this weekend. <laughs> and a throw in for Bromfield. And this will be another throw in for Bromfield. Smith looking for Seipel, headed away from him, but it goes back to Smith. Caprio. Kalen tries to feed it back to Caprio. And a shot from about 25 yards by Dukovic. Just rolls in on keeper, ready more than up to the challenge. Nori for Cohasset. Taken away by Caprio. And they were looking for Malis, but he couldn't get back to the ball. Throw in Cohasset. Cameron goes into the corner, but the ball's out over the touchline. It'll be a throw in for Bromfield. No call over the top by Weissenflu, but no call. Now we get a call. This will be a free kick for Bromfield. Seipel right by Smith. Pass Kalen, and this will go out off of Dutkovich, so it will be a throw in for Cohasset. The Massachusetts Interscholastic Athletic Association is committed to good sportsmanship. Sportsmanship, citizenship, and responsibility are the trademarks of high school activities. So support, support school activities with your own displays of good sportsmanship and help encourage America's youth to accept the responsibility which freedom demands. Support your local high school. See the future of America on display. Attend high school competition in your community. And an end zone angle as Joel Reddy kicked the ball out. 
he really has found this second half much more to his liking. He's been getting great distance with the wind at his back. Seipel cleared away from Dutkovic. This is Caprio shielding the ball now for Bromfield ahead for Dukovic. Mark Dukovic back for Caprio in the corner. Caprio unable to get it into the area as it was cleared away from him by Bill Baird. We will get a corner kick. Cliff Kalen goes to the corner and a substitution for Bromfield, number 12 coming into the lineup, Lee Marlowe, number 17 leaving, Glenn Malis. Kalen with the corner up in front looking for Smith over his head and cleared away. Jason Cameron. And it was taken away from Cameron on a nice defensive play by Mintonen. And this will be a throw in for Bromfield to boot. And you look at the shots, Bromfield 10 to 3, and the score would reflect the same thing. Bromfield 2, Cohasset nothing. This will be a throw in down deep, just inside the attacking third. A good crowd on hand. A bundled up crowd, I might add. Long, long feed into the area, just goes by everything and over the end line. And TJ, just over 22 minutes left in the match, losing 2-0. If you're Dan Magner, are you going to try and make a few tactical adjustments, maybe move the sweeper back up and play with three backs? I think you have to. I mean, it's the last game, whether you win or lose, and 2-0 uh, or 3-0 is not going to make much of a difference. I just soon try and get that one goal because then emotion will kick in. Michael Smith looking to send the attack. Wiesenflu, however, was right there. Take the ball away from Marlowe. Jason around Jason. That was Cameron around Brader. This is Dutkovic. Feet ahead for Caprio. Cleared back. Travis Coley just getting it back to keeper. You look at right. Righty or ready. And it was cleared away from Clifford Kalen. Marsak trying to get into the area, cleared back to keeper. And it seems as though Cohasset's attack is just missing something, and that something could be a player on the bench, Jim Reddy. 33 goals in the season, can't play today, the broken foot. 33 goals and eight assists sitting on the bench, and it really doesn't do you any good when you're down two to nothing. Here's Caprio with a feed for Dutkovic. Jason Cameron now for Cohasset. Works it back toward midfield. But Seipel comes away with it and clears it back to keeper. Less than 20 minutes to play in regulation now. As you look at David Keller, he sat out the first half as Gregory Kimball played the first half for Bromfield. Keller has played the entire second half. And in goal at the other end for Cohasset all the way, Joel Reddy. Seipel tries to put it outside for Dukovic. Kept in by Stevenson to Coley. And 
And Cohasset really looking to just keep the ball turned downfield. This is Jason Cameron in the corner for Cohasset. Just managed to catch up with it and put it into the area, but there was nobody home. No attack behind Cameron at all. And he's limping as he comes out of the corner. He appears to be favoring his right ankle. Jason Cameron, 1989 South Shore League All-Star. It's a good point there. Scott Cameron had the ball in the corner. Cohasset only had one player. Player right here with the ball up in the middle of the goal area. They really got to get more players forward. And again, I don't know if it's the effect of the turf or what, but again, the feed just way too long for Cameron. And a good possibility also could be he just couldn't catch up with it. As you look at the Cohasset bench, they have one big scorer, Jim Reddy, already on the sideline. And the man that they moved up to try to beef up the attack, Jason Cameron, number 15, is limping very, very noticeably. And that is sure to have an effect on the attack as well. And it could have already had its first effect as that last feed went long. And it's just possible that he was just unable to catch up with it. This is Jason Cameron picking up the ball. Now he seems to be running well, maybe playing a little possum. I don't know. Jason Cameron with the ball and some nice foot moves as well. To Coley, back to Cameron. There's not enough movement off the ball for Cohasset. Cameron had the ball there. Did well to shield the ball for a few seconds, but none of his mates made a good run for him. He definitely held it long enough for somebody to get into the box as if the ball never arrived. Caprio down the far sideline. Caprio working around. Baird keeps it in. This is Caprio into the area. And Caprio is taken down in the area. That's got to be a penalty it, kick. We are, we haven't got, I have not seen a penalty shot call, Gary. I have not either. I don't know what the call is. He's calling for the trainer to come onto the field. Caprio appears injured. And you, you, you can, can see a call, TJ. I, I, I didn't see him it point to the line for a penalty I didn't kick. either, but it definitely looked like he was brought down he from behind. He was definitely brought down from behind in the area. And you can see James Caprio is really in pain. Let's see if we can pick it up. And here's Caprio clearly through the defense, clearly past the last line of defense. Bill Baird comes from behind, clearly takes him down. That should be a penalty kick here for Bromfield. We'll have to wait and see what the decision is. And you can see Caprio go down on his left knee, and that appears to be what the problem is. The only signal we have seen from the referee was when he called for the trainer to come out on the field. The feeling here in the booth is that it should be a penalty kick, but we have not seen any official ruling on the play. And you can look at them looking at the lower leg, the lower left leg of James Caprio. 16-49 left in regulation with Bromfield leading two to nothing. You look at Bromfield coach Tom Hill with the sunglasses on. My best guess is they're going to be given a goal kick here, but it definitely looked like he was uh, in the replay even uh, that he was stepped on from the rear. I think I got to agree with you. Reddy's holding on to the ball. Looks as though they're going to get a goal kick out of it. Well, the ball did go over the end line off of James Caprio. And here's the here's the play once again. You're going to see Caprio clearly behind the last line of defense, and Baird's going to come in from behind and just clip his left foot right there. There's the foul. There's the infraction. Looks as though it should be a penalty kick. The ball goes out of bounds. He comes down hard in the right knee, and that appears as though we were, where he was injured, and the ball went out of bounds. So they don't call a penalty kick. It looks like it's going to have to be a goal kick for Cohasset. And it would appear that that is what they're going to do, set up a goal kick as they help James Caprio off the field. Now, he has really been a major part of the Bromfield attack here throughout the game. I think and behind him on the field, uh, Joel Reddy is setting up a goal kick. So they are calling it an over-the-end line play. Representatives of local school committees, school superintendents, school administrators, athletic directors, coaches, game officials, and physicians numbering close to 500 
voluntarily contribute their time and service to more than 30 MIAA standing committees. The efforts of these men and women are the strength and backbone of the Massachusetts Interscholastic Athletic Association. The MIAA salutes all who serve as MIAA committee members on behalf of the 160,000 MIAA student athletes across the Commonwealth. And here it is, that's the restart. A goal kick for Reddy. And Bromfield looking again to go on the attack. Their attack will be slowed now with James Caprio on the sideline. Coley just clears back to keeper. 16 and a half minutes left in regulation. It's 2-0 Bromfield in the Division Three state final. During that stoppage, goalkeeper Reddy got his team together saying, hey guys, look, we have uh, just over 16 minutes left in our season. Let's go. And this will be a throw in for Bromfield. And another throw in for Bromfield, Michael Smith. Cleared away by Baird. Seipel feeding it long, trying to catch up with Marlowe. It's taken away from him. A little touch of class there by that defender. Dutkovich in front for Seipel. And Seipel looks into the corner, but Kalen won't be able to catch up with it, and it'll be a goal kick for Cohasset. Number 11, Clifford Kalen. Kalen and the man who just left, James Caprio, really have been setting up most of the attack this afternoon for either team. And again, Coley with the clear back to keeper. Cohasset sweeper imploring his teammates to move up, move up. Well, they want to move up, move up now with 15 minutes left to play. Nori heads it forward. Trying to get it to Cameron in the middle, cleared away from him by Adrian Dukovic. This is Coley putting it in front, and it goes over the goal line, and we are going to get a corner kick. And I believe this will be the first corner kick of the game for Cohasset. Now's the time where you got to get nine or ten players into the penalty box and hope for a goal. Less than 15 minutes in the match. And there they go. Everybody moving forward. And the man who's handled most of the restarts, Travis Coley, will handle the corner kick. Coley going right into the area over everybody and over the end line and a wasted opportunity. This will be a goal kick for Bromfield. It wasn't a bad idea there by Coley going to the far post. If a Cohasset player had held wide, he could have headed that ball right back into the middle, right back into the traffic, and anything could happen there. They were a bit impatient trying to get into the box. They arrived too early. And as you said, Gary, if somebody had been wide, but there was nobody wide, everybody was actually in the penalty box. Cohasset has the luxury now with one of their top forwards on the bench. They do have a little bit of a luxury in that they can play defensively now with 13 and a half minutes, or I should say Bromfield with that luxury with 13 and a half minutes left in a two to nothing lead. Cohasset, Cohasset, on the other hand, really has to mount an attack, and there hasn't been much of one so far today. The wind really took its toll on the skippers in the first half and it has taken its toll also on Bromfield here in the second half as Bromfield has not been able to really do much against it. They had one apparent goal that came on an offside play. But it was two to nothing at the half and we still stand there two nothing Bromfield. And we will have a throw in for Cohasset. And another throw in for Cohasset. Josh Stevenson handling the throw. Seipel downfield for Kalen. Kalen into the area, pops it on the side of the goal. It's taken down by Reddy. And he quickly looks to send his teammates downfield with a punt. Great flash of speed there by Kalen going around. Baird, the sweeper back. You can see Baird is still limping. The right, the right ankle injury.
Jason Cameron back to Marsak. Free kick for Cohasset in their attacking third. Well, move the ball back just inside the attacking third for Cohasset. This is very similar to the area where they scored the game-winning goal against Marblehead. Marsak deflected in the shot here. Travis Coley. Coley tries to put it right through the middle, rejected right back to Coley, tries another shot, this one weak, and it'll go through the area right to keeper. Well, TJ, if you're Tom Hill with a 2-0 lead, are you feeling happy right now? He's feeling a lot happier than Dan is, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, TJ, you got right to the heart of the matter on that one. <laughs> are you content with a 2-0 lead here? Are you still want, you want your team I, I, to fall back and play a little defensive, or you want to keep attacking? It's dangerous to protect a one-goal lead. The two-goal lead, I think he should be relatively confident right now because they seem still to be first to the ball in most cases. Cohasset again looking to Cameron to get something going. Cameron, uh, since he apparently suffered an injury down in the corner about 10 minutes ago, seems to have uh, gotten pretty healthy in a hurry. I think what he, if he's smart, he'll he'll make sure the play stays in front of him, just doesn't get behind him at Brownfield. Well, the teams are already moving into the field for the next championship game. That would be the Division II game. We return to action here. No call. Cameron trying to set up an attack, trailing two to nothing. Or Cohasset. So you see the intensity that Brownfield still plays with. Uh, they're, they're, they've been very explosive all day going to the ball. I think and that's been the key be to the match. I think that has been the key to the match. Bromfield just seems to want this game slightly more than Cohasset. Michael Smith with the throw in for Bromfield. And a push called on the play on Glenn Malis. This will be a free kick for Cohasset. There's Malis, number 17 on your screen. Bill Baird, number two for Cohasset. And the keeper is Joel Reddy. We have less than 10 minutes to play in regulation now as Reddy looks to send his teammates down. Cameron trying to catch up with it, but he's beaten to the ball by keeper Kim, uh, Keller. And this will be a throw in for Cohasset. Push called and a free kick for Bromfield. Travis Coley called for the push. Bromfield just nine minutes away from its fourth consecutive Division Three state championship. That was Cliff Kalen who almost got into the area. Marsak for Cohasset, but he loses it. And now we get a throwing call for Cohasset. It appeared to have gone off Marsak. He tries to throw it into Cole. He can't get it through. Cleared away by Seipel. Right out to Bill Baird. Nori. One touch outside by Cameron. And cleared off the head of Seipel. Trying to send an attack away. This is Marlowe. Lee Marlowe gets the ball in front for Kalen. Kalen. No call. Looking for a trip. Looking for a handball. Nothing either way. The play comes back. Cohasset over the head of Cameron. Unable to get a one-touch header on it. And Cameron clears it out. This will be a throw in for Bromfield. Seven and a half minutes left in regulation. That's Cameron on your screen. Jason Cameron, number 15. Cameron is a senior, and he is the guy they have been looking to to try to get back into this game. Time is called. We have an injured player down on the field, Glenn Malis for Bromfield. 7.22 left, 2 to nothing. Bromfield with the lead and the second 
Bromfield player to go down injured here in the second half. Malis had an assist on one of the goals. He's down now. The man who scored one of the goals, Caprio, out of action already on the bench. I think on this level, TJ, you really can understand and appreciate the uh, importance of the team trainer, how important it is to have somebody qualified to be the first one out there. That's absolutely, and that's been a big plus in the past few years throughout the state, the, uh, the introduction of athletic trainers into the high schools. And uh, it's been a major bonus for the schools that can afford to get the money to, to uh, support them. Well, I know that the training program for the trainers has really intensified over the last four or five years. I can remember back when I played high school. I graduated in 1983 at Warford High School in Connecticut. We did not have an athletic trainer. Our, our coach was our athletic There's trainer. There's still a few schools in association that don't have them, and uh, I think they're walking a fine line. It's, it's an absolute plus for the program. Matt Minton in with the setup, trying to get it into the area. It's headed away. This is Travis Coley for Cohasset. Skippers have got to scramble now, but it'll be a throw-in for Bromfield. Now, as far as Newton North goes, is there one trainer for every team, or is it just one trainer for the entire school? We have uh, our sports medicine program is uh, in includes two trainers, and then we have a student training program where we uh, get assistance from the student body. We, we just saw. Okay. Yeah, I'm sorry. Ahead. We we um, reward them with uh, athletic uh, certificates and stuff like that, so they feel an important part of the program. And here's the last rush here by Bromfield. The ball is clearly out of bounds. Played back into the middle, but Reddy makes a good save anyway. That was Kalen, Clifford Kalen, who made the play. Yeah, a lot of nice runs on that right side. A lot of speed. Nuri feeds it long for Marsak. Can Marsak outrun the defense? No. Nice clearing play by Adrian Dukovic. There's another indication of the turf having a, a possibly something to do with whether he catches it or not. This will be a throw in for Cohasset. Dutkovic with a nice defensive play, you clearing see, the ball out wide. You can see Dutkovic and Mar Marsak going for the ball right here. Dutkovic comes in. It's a nice sliding tackle. You only want a slide tackle for a last alternative, but he knocked the ball wide. Marsak would have been one on one with the keeper, not for that great slide tackle by Dutkovic. I suppose you could argue both ways about the turf. He can run a lot faster on it, I suppose. A lot of conversation in the press box at halftime about the uh, turf. And uh, as you mentioned, TJ, they like to have it scheduled here so that regardless of the conditions, you know the turf is going to be ready to play on. And uh, somebody made a suggestion that perhaps this should be considered as a backup site with a natural turf field for the uh, players uh, as the primary site. Uh, I just think it's great that an uh, institution like WPI gets involved in something like this and is such a gracious host and everything. And, and uh, I, we, we can't lose sight of the fact that these kids are excited about playing on it. So that's part of high school sport as well. Nothing, nothing against the turf. We aren't saying that. It's just that they play their entire regular exactly. season on natural grass. But, again, it's not a handicap to either side because both teams are in the same situation. Michael Smith with a throw-in for Bromfield. Seipel heads it down for Kalen. And a quick give-and-go back to Seipel down the far side. Looking for Kalen in front and coming out high with a quick clear is ready. And this will be a throw-in for Bromfield. They're looking at it now. They are looking at, well, one way or the other, the season ends here today. But if they're going to do it on the winning side, they have got to do something right now. Cohasset, that is, trailing two to nothing. They have four minutes left in regulation. A foul called on Cohasset. This will be a free kick for Bromfield. Foul on the play on Travis Coley, number 12. Seipel with the restart. Went right for the area. Rejected away out to Cameron. Cameron worked around one defender, around two, but back is Adrian Dutkovic. 
And again for the second time in about two minutes they couldn't get it around Dutkovich. Nuri. And a nice defensive play that time by Mittenen. I don't think anybody will be able to fault Mr. Cameron's intensity for Cohasset. He's been a, an attitude plus going to every ball. Three minutes left in regulation. Tom Hill and his Bromfield Trojans very well on their way to their fourth consecutive Division Three state championship as they take a two to nothing lead into the final three minutes. Handball, no call, play on. Foley with a feed downfield for Marsak and the ball just headed behind Marsak on another nice defensive play by Mittenen. Baird trying to turn it downfield. And almost a break for Mark Dukovic. The keeper is out. And he gets back. Jim Joel Reddy getting back and sliding on the ball. And we are going to get a yellow card. A yellow card call against Bromfield. That's Clifford Kalen getting the call. Reddy was trying to be a little bit too cute on that play. Instead of blasting the ball downfield, tried to dribble it and control it himself and got dispossessed. And it was a great scoring opportunity there for Bromfield. And as you can see, Kalen leaving the field, as TJ explained in the pregame show, yellow card, you have to leave right away. Now uh, he can... Reddy comes off his line here. He tries to play the ball to himself or to a teammate, so he just mishits it, slips, and now he's 30 or 40 yards out of the net. Bromfield, a good scoring opportunity, but sort of just played into the box. And we're going to see Reddy come first to the ball, and there's the yellow card offense there in the back. In the rear there by Kalen. Kalen pushing Baird over the keeper, Reddy. Now Kalen can be put back in at the next substitution if they'd like. We are down below the two minute mark now. The official time being kept on the sideline now. The field clock has stopped. Quick throw in by Bromfield as they continue to show that intensity, a two to nothing lead with less than two minutes to go and they're going for more and look at Reddy come down to try to start the attack himself as Cohasset is looking at the final two minutes of the season yes, number nine Sean Ruthier is the player who came in for Kalen when Kalen left with a yellow card Throw in Kohasset. Cameron looking for Nuri. Headed away from him by Dukovic. And Cameron with the throw in for Kohasset again. Cleared down by the other Dukovic, Mark. And headed back by his brother Adrian. So the Dukovic boys are going to keep this one in their pocket by themselves. Michael Smith puts it up into the wind. And Bromfield has this one pretty well salted away now. Time just about to run out in this Division Three championship game. There's the final horn. And you see the Bromfield bench unload onto the field. Bromfield has taken the Division Three MIAA State Championship by a score of two to nothing over the Cohasset Skippers. And Jim Reddy, the Cohasset keeper, right out to midfield to shake hands with the officials. You look at the celebration for the Bromfield Trojans, the 1989 Massachusetts Division Three state champions. And we'll be back to wrap this one up in just a moment. delivers Boston College football. It's 
the season finale as the Boston College Eagles face the Ramblin' Wreck from Georgia Tech Sunday night at 7.30 here on Nestle. Dangerous play is a shot on goal there. Swift with the save. Another shot. It's loose. They shot and they score. I it's kind of goal. They hit it towards the circle. It rolls loose. Pat kicks that man and the score. Beautiful follow up there on the part of the. Cam Neely delivers the toughest body check in hockey. Roger Clemens delivers at 90 miles an hour. Nesson delivers the Bruins, Red Sox, and college soccer. Lacrosse, pro and amateur golf. Boston College football. More New England sports than anyone else. Nesson delivers. We're back at Alumni Field in Worcester, Massachusetts. The Bromfield Trojans have just claimed their fourth straight Division III State Boys Soccer Championship with a 2 to nothing win over the Cohasset Clippers. And, well, my colleague Gary Swanson is standing by at field level right now with the coach of the Bromfield Trojans, Tom Hill. Gary? Coach Hill, your fourth consecutive state championship. How does this compare with some of the other state titles? Well, the first one was really special because it's the first time. And then... This one, the kids have worked so hard. It's so difficult to keep on replacing so many key players. Every year we got seven, eight, nine, ten seniors who are really important. And you have to have a good balance of seniors to lead and the underclassmen, you know, and everybody's worked so hard this year. And this year, I, you know, I said, you know, I'd just be happy just to get here. And the kids played so well today because we've had some games which really haven't played that well. But the defense came on during the end of the year, second half of the year, and the offense had a tough time finishing. But... The kid just worked so hard, and they just they just wanted to win to prove that they, you know, were as good as the teams in the past. Now, I thought the key to today's game was that uh, your team adapted better to the field conditions, the artificial turf, and the weather conditions. Yeah, it took us about five or ten minutes, you know, the fa the, the the wind plus the, fa the the fast field, but we had the same wind in Quaybaugh. It took us a while, so I think we got used to it here. And in the fast field, uh, you know, our field is nothing like this, so I, I think we probably did, but... Uh, no, we just, we, the, the wind was a fact in the first half. Then when, once you get a lead, you can sit back and you, you know, we didn't sit back on the lead because we knew we, we really had to, had to press because you give them too many chances and they, you know, they're bound to score. Okay, it looked like the, the key player today was Caprio. We were looking for Seiple to dominate the midfield, but Caprio made a lot of things happen out there today. Yeah, J Jimmy gets the ball and he, he helps control it because he keeps it so long and he's tough to get, a, get, get the ball away from him. He and John Seiple and Mike Smith, you know, the three of them, the halfbacks, just really help us control the midfield in most of the games and it really is a big difference because they give the forwards enough a chance to finish up but yeah jimmy played an outstanding game and he he was he did, couldn't practice a couple of days ago and john seipel hasn't practiced in three days because of his he's had a couple of injuries okay coach Hill, th thanks a lot congratulations on your fourth consecutive title and back to you in the booth scott okay. okay and i would like to add my congratulations to coach tom hill and his bromfield trojans four consecutive division three state championships Today's final, two to nothing over Cohasset. Gary and I will be back to wrap it up right after this timeout.